Today I'm going to go over how to use probability to solve Mendelian crosses. And this video is going to be the basic version for this. So the cross that we're going to look at is going to be our doubly heterozygous sweet pea. And these sweet peas are going to be big P, little p, big Y, little y. So these sweet peas are not true breeding. If we allow them to self-cross, they're going to produce more than one phenotype of progeny. So even though they look like they have purple flowers and yellow seeds, within their genome they also have the alleles for white flowers and green seeds. So we're going to self-cross these. And this is what it looks like when you do the F1 cross to make the F2 generation from the standard crosses we've been going over. So when you do this, you end up getting four different possible phenotypes. So let's look at the phenotypes first. These phenotypes are going to be purple flowers with yellow seeds, purple flowers with green seeds, white flowers with yellow seeds and white flowers with green seeds. Now for the purposes of this, uh, this exercise we're going to assume that these are independently assorting loci in other words these little sites are on different chromosomes, they are unlinked. Okay, so that's what we're thinking about for this particular exercise. So now let's think about the genotypes of each of these four classes of progeny. And so the genotypes of our purple flower yellow seed individuals, they're going to have to have at least one big P for purple. Now their other allele for, pur for the purple locus could either be a little P or a big P. It doesn't matter for getting this genotype. To get this genotype purple, you just need one dominant allele. Same thing goes for the seed coat color. If we see a yellow seed coat, you just need one big Y your other copy of the allele, or your other copy of the locus could be either big Y or little y. So for purple flowers, big P, green seed coat, you're gonna need two copies of the recessive version to get a, per, a green seed coat. For white flowers, you need two copies of little p at the P locus, and then for a yellow seed coat, again, one big Y at least. And then for our final class, white flowers, two copies of little p with green seed coat, two copies of little y. So our double homozygous recessive. So these are our different genotypes. And one question that we like to ask in Mendelian crosses is, for independently assorting alleles, how many of each of these do we expect? And right now, this is kind of a, just an academic question, how many of each of these we expect. But later on, this is actually going to turn into a really important experimental question when we start looking at linkage. Because when we look at linked genes, we are not going to get back out these expected numbers. So it's really important to understand how we get these numbers, these 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 numbers that we're going to talk about. Because we're going to compare those to the case where they are linked genes. And doing that comparison will actually allow us to tell whether two genetic loci are actually linked or if they're unlinked. So we already know how many of these we expect. We expect nine of these, three of these, three of these, and one of these. That's our nine to three to three to one ratio. So now I want to look at where does this ratio actually come from? So I want to start out with the sort of really basic way of thinking about this without using probability theory. Now this way takes a lot longer to do, to work out the whole problem for, which is why we're going to do probability theory to do the shortcut. So I want to start out with this particular one here, this three. This one's going to be a little bit faster than looking at the nine. And so we want to say how many gametes 
or sorry, how many gametic combinations are going to give us this purple-green phenotype? So if we think about that, we can think about the, these gametes, and these gametes are each going to have one P and one Y in them. And so if we want to get this big P something, little y, little y, the crosses that we get, they're all the gametes are going to have to have a little y, and then the gametes will either have to have one, uh, they'll either have to have a big P or a little p, and every cross has to have one big P at least. So we can have these gametes coming together. We can have the opposite way, so let's say that these are the eggs and these are the sperm. We can have the opposite way where we have an egg with the little p. Or we can get two big p's. So there are three ways, three gametic combinations that give this. But this doesn't tell us how many we expect. This is just three gametic combinations. We need to know the total number of gametic combinations possible from this cross. And we can figure that out by making this really giant and ridiculous Punnett square that I am not going to completely draw out because it is really boring. But I'm going to just draw out this part of it here. So if we have eggs along this side and sperm along this side, each of the boxes inside of this here, each of those boxes is going to represent one zygote, so one of the results from these crosses. So I'll put the eggs on the top. We can get a big P, big Y egg, a little P, big Y egg, a big P, little Y egg, or a little P, little Y egg. And because these are independently assorting and there's equal segregation of these alleles, we expect to see equal amounts of all four of these different kinds of eggs. Since this is a self-cross, the sperm are going to have the exact same genotypes as the eggs. So big P, big Y, little P, big Y, big P, little Y, little P, little Y. So we can see that there are four possible gamete types. So four possible types of sperm, four possible types of eggs. And if we sort of just draw these boxes, I'm not going to fill these in. But if we just draw these boxes, we can see that this gives us 16 boxes, and that means that there are 16 potential zygote genotypes. So 16 possible um, combinations of these, um, of these gametes. So not 16 total genotypes, but 16 combinations of gametes. And so this number here will be three out of 16 different possibilities. So now let's try the, fa the faster way using basic probability. And to do this, we are going to actually take the probability of each of the two different loci and then multiply them together. Because we know that the probability of getting a big P something, little y, little y, that's going to be the same as the probability of getting a big P something times the probability of getting those two little y's. Because these are independently assorting alleles, so their probabilities can be separated out like this. So this is going to equal the probability of getting big P something, little y, little y. So let's first look at the probability of the big P something. The probability of getting the big P something, if we do a little Punnett square for it, this Punnett square is going to be easy because it's only going to have four boxes in it. We can have eggs that are big P, eggs that are little P, sperm that is big P, sperm that are little P. So two big P's is one of our zygote types. A big P, little P is one zygote type. Another big P, little P, and a little P, little P. So these are the four kinds of zygotes that we expect to find an equal frequency in this cross in terms of the P locus. So the probability of getting a big P something, we have this one, this one, and this one, and that makes that probability three 
out of four, three-fourths. The probability of getting two little y's, I'm going to just redraw out this Punnett square for practice, but I probably don't need to. You guys can probably figure this one out. You've got big y eggs, little y eggs, big y sperm, whoops, I tried to draw a b there, little y sperm. So we get big y, big y, big y, little y. Big Y, little Y, little Y, little Y. And there's only one of these different possible zygotes that's going to give us two little Y's. So the probability of getting little Y, little Y in a zygote is one out of four. So if we multiply these two numbers together, we end up with three sixteenths, which is the same number that we got from drawing out the different uh, the different combinations with the dihybrids, so the P and Y loci represented at the same time. So this way is a lot faster, especially if you don't have to draw out the Punnett square every time, if you already know that you're going to get one-fourth little y, little y, one-fourth big y, big y, and one-half big y, little y. If you already know those in your head, then this way is going to be a lot faster. So you can work this out actually for any of these different um, genotypes. I'm going to do that over here. So this one we already did, and we got 3 sixteenths, which is where that 3 is coming from. For this one here, this one is the easiest one, the bottom one, the little p, little p, little y, little y. So the little p, little p, we can go back to here, and we can see that the probability of that is 1 fourth. We already did probability for little y, little y. So it's going to be 1 fourth times 1 fourth equals 1 sixteenth. There's our 1. Let's solve this one. Little p, little p, big Y something. So little p, little p, we know the probability of that is one fourth. Big Y something, we can look over here. It's one, two, three out of four. And so this is also gonna be 3 sixteenths. So these are our two threes. Now let's look at this harder one, this nine here. This nine here is kind of fun. There are a lot of different gametic combinations that can give you a big P something, big Y something, zygote. So if we look at the P locus, we already know there's one, two, three ways to get a big P something. So that's three fourths. And then there are also one, two, three ways to get a big Y something. So that's three fourths. And so this is going to equal nine sixteenths. So you can see that doing it this way is going to be a lot faster than drawing out those really giant Punnett squares for all of these, uh, for, for these 16 uh, different possibilities. And it's also going to be faster than drawing out all of the different gametic combinations possible. We just have to do one Punnett square for each of them, or we just have to know these 1 fourth and 3 fourths numbers in our head already.